Hello lovelies, I'm here to bring us the new moon reading. This is our new moon forecast for the new moon in Gemini happening on Monday, May 30th at 6.32 a.m. United States Central Standard Time. The first three cards are the Seven of Cups, the Empress card, and the Nine of Swords the next three cards are the Hermit, the Hanged Man, and the Knight of Cups. The last three cards are the Three of Wands, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Emperor card. So the first three cards relate to the dark phase of the moon, the unconscious, the subconscious, the underworld, the shadow self. These cards are the Seven of Cups, the Empress, and the Nine of Swords. So what I'm seeing is a bondage or a restricted feeling surrounding our inner feminine, but not only our inner feminine, surrounding our idea of ourselves as creators, as creatrix, as manifestors, as creative beings, as fertile beings. So I'm seeing this energy of creation that exists within all of us and that can be manifest in these many different ways. I'm seeing it feeling restricted. And I'm seeing that there may be some illusions surrounding this. So when we talk about illusions, this can go in many directions depending on the individual, but overall um, having an illusion about a situation such as this or about yourself in this context would, could manifest as feeling as if you are cursed, feeling as if outside forces are against you, feeling as if something is inherently wrong with you, feeling like you are unable to create the way that others are or that you have an inability to have enough agency in your own life, feeling as if the universe is working against you and that you aren't able to um, make your world or make your life make your circumstances into what you would desire them to be. So feeling a restriction in this way. And this is um, all about what we want to create in our lives, how we want our lives to feel, how we want our lives to look, how we want to feel, um, what we want to be doing and spending time on on a daily basis, what we want to bring into existence um, how we want ourselves and our lives to flourish. It's about the growth that we desire as well as the things that we wish to actually bring into existence. So this restricted feeling can feel like a heavy weight. It can feel like a blockage. It can feel like a um, everything that you do or many things that you do um, kind of turn sideways, go in, an, in a direction that you aren't expecting them to go in. And because we're talking about what's going on underneath the surface of things, um, what we may be seeing or feeling on the surface is more like just a feeling of frustration, a feeling of um, defeat, a, a bit of hopelessness, um, depression, things of this nature, and, and also um, a, just a general feeling of malaise and stagnancy, okay? So some guidance that could help with this feeling, of course, the, the next six cards are going to have that guidance as well, but... Um, just to get us started, some guidance that could help with this feeling is to pay attention to what is going on inside your mind. Take some extra time for some mindfulness, even if that just looks like 
sitting for a few minutes to listen to your thoughts more carefully, but also paying attention to how you're feeling in your body, um, how you're feeling in general, and what kinds of thoughts may be coming up or even ongoing sort of underneath your uh, everyday thoughts that can be contributing to this this feeling because um, like I said there may be some some thoughts that such as okay I'm just not cut out to have success in this area of my life or I just am not able to um, make such and such happen or you know basically thoughts along the lines of something is wrong with me something is inherently wrong with me um, or I'm blocked or I'm cursed right so what's happening there um, paying attention to those thoughts could be surprising to you paying attention to how you're feeling in your body could be surprising to you you may find um things that are triggering you or underlying beliefs that you didn't even realize you were putting attention into or putting energy into so that could be a starting point the next three cards are the hermit the hanged man and the knight of cups and these cards are all about the transition, the transformation from the dark phase into the new moon. So how can we get um, out of the shadow? How can we bring the shadow material out of the darkness, make it, um, bring it further into the light? And what does that transition look like? What is the growth that we can take advantage of with this new moon. So the hermit always says, look within. The hanged man says, um, you're going to have to stop until it's time to move forward and nothing will move forward until you do stop. So it's always an interesting catch-22. You want to move forward, but you can't until you stop. <laughs> and then the Knight of Cups is here and the Knight of Cups is saying you'll be able to move forward if you're moving forward in a way that's really in alignment for you, in alignment with what feels right to you, in an alignment with how your intuition is leading you, in alignment with what you're passionate about, in alignment with your inspiration. And you should have some inspiration, some significant inspiration and some significant intuition, some insights coming through those realms uh, as the moon is transitioning out of the dark phase and into the new phase. So watch for that. And that is going to be the leader. The Knight of Cups is the leader here, even though the Hermit is such a strong card. The Hanged Man, obviously, you know, has their own stuff going on as well, not to discount them. But the Knight of Cups is the leader here. And the Knight of Cups is saying, You'll be led through this change when you follow your heart. So in order to follow your heart, you're going to want to first look within. The hermit says, you yourself are your best teacher in dark times. You have the lantern that you need to shine forth on your own path Yes, it's good and positive and healthy to seek care and guidance and assistance from others, to seek support um, and to get help. But ultimately, um, that information, that guidance, that support, it can be used, needs to be used um, to look within yourself. And ultimately, you're the one who makes your best judgment you're the one who makes the best decisions. You're the one who knows yourself the most. So we all get into those um, points in time where we need the guidance, we need the support, um, we you know need to seek assistance from others. But ultimately, that is for the purpose of educating ourselves and learning more about ourselves and being able to look within. So gathering from the outside in order to nourish um, the inside, the inner self. 
And that's what the hermit would like you to do during this new moon is nourish your inner self. Spend some introverted time. Gather your knowledge together. Many times we have a lot of um, resources already available to us in terms of what we know about ourselves. We, um, but we forget. <laughs> we forget key points about ourselves. We, we forget key points about our life's journey. We forget key information about where we've come from, how we've grown, what our path has been like, and where we're headed. And that's normal um, because there's a lot that we have to manage in life other than just our spiritual growth, right? That's the whole challenge. So sometimes we just need to go within in order to remember um, what it is we need to know about ourselves right now and use that information to realign and move forward. And the hanged man is saying, you're not going to be able to move forward until you um, bring into balance these two things. The bring into balance the hermit and the knight of cups. So bring into balance this inner knowledge uh, and, you know, the wisdom that you carry about yourself, the wisdom that you carry about your journey, your life path, and marry that with what you're passionate about, what you feel the most about, what feels right for you, and what your inspiration and your intuition and your insight is telling you about uh, how you need to move forward. So... The hanged man has such an important message always because the indication is that things are already starting to change. Uh, the change is happening within us in that uh, underworld material that we already talked about in our first three cards. That's where the change is happening. But um, the, ch the hanged man is always telling us underneath the surface of things, uh, things are already shifting. They're already changing. And the reason we're feeling uncomfortable is because we feel the change, but we don't know where we're going and we don't know what action to take. And so that's what makes us feel like we're stuck because we don't know yet where we're going or what actions we should take to get there. That is a frustration. That is a stuck feeling. That is a feeling of bondage, but it's not real. It's an intellectual trick. It's a trick that our brains are telling us, um, that our anxiety is telling us, that our fear is telling us. It's, it's really fear-based and it's based on the fear of the unknown. So it's an illusion that you're stuck. And that's what we will begin to see and feel and to know more um, deeply as the moon begins to move from the dark phase into the visible phase of the new moon. And our last three cards are the Three of Wands, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Emperor card. And these three cards are all about the illumination, the illumination offered up to us through that visible new moon in the sky and also the illumination offered to us um, when we embrace the growth phase that we have available to us during this new moon, during this new phase of our lives. Um, and the uh, illuminated knowledge or guidance that has the potential to come out of those first six cards. So the three of wands says, Yes, there are more potentials and possibilities for you in the future than perhaps you've anticipated, but you won't be able to do it alone. So interesting new revelations about um, what is possible for you. Um, things that maybe you haven't considered at all, right? Things, new, new things really coming to you if you are open to them and also the caveat, if you can accept that you can't do it alone, that you need support or you need community or you need a group. Um, there may even be some very specific projects that you have been working on or wanting to bring into fruition and that you've been thinking, you know, 
that you will do completely solo and you may have the revelation that you'll partner with someone or that it will actually be a group project, right? So community might be very important moving forward or at least um, seeking that support, guidance, assistance. The Knight of Pentacles always reminds us that true growth and true progress happen step by step, brick by brick. We have to have patience with our growth. Um, when we grow too fast, it's usually because something chaotic has happened. It's usually because um, we've been jostled, we've been pushed, um, we've gone through a trauma, we've had a surprise that wasn't pleasant. And that's okay, we need that too as humans. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's normal. Um, and the, but the Knight of Pentacles says when we want to be in charge of our growth and we want it to be something that is digestible and something that is sustainable and something that's going to offer us a long-term positive change and offer us a strong foundation for our future, not some fly-by-night success, but something that's really offering us substance for our lives, then we want that to happen step by step. We want to have the patience and the um, clarity to understand that each small progress builds upon each next progress. Uh, and um, in that way, we can also be more grateful and more appreciative and take more pride in the growth that we have and in how far we've come. So sometimes it's a matter of not recognizing the way in which we're growing in the present because we're impatient, because humans are impatient and we're wanting something to happen more quickly, more dramatically, more life-changing, uh, you know, bigger, better, overhaul everything. But obviously, uh, many times that's just not the kind of growth that offers us sustainability. And what we really want is to have a strong foundation for the future. Um, so the emperor is here as well. So more strong cards, definitely um, landing on a strong card. I do think it's significant that the empress and the emperor are both here in this reading. We've been getting a lot of messages, right? I've been getting a lot of messages in our last uh, two or three readings about balance and integration and balance between um, our feminine and our masculine aspects. And we can look at that many different ways. Balance between our sun and our moon. Balance between our extroverted nature and our introverted nature, right? Balance between our mind and our hearts, our brain and our hearts, our emotions and our intellect, so um, I do feel that integration is a larger generalized message that is coming through here in any way that that balance can be um, tapped into a bit more or considered a bit more. Uh, this is a good moon to do it. This is a good time to do it. Um, this can even be about your personal life versus your work life, um, so on and so forth. So where is it that you might need more balance within yourself or within your life? And um, how can you use the guidance present here as well as the, the blessings and the supports of this coming new moon in order to assist you with that? And then getting back to the specific details of this reading, uh, ending here on the emperor in this uh, illumination phase we're really seeing the recognition that yes, you know, I, I can be the CEO of my life. <laughs> I can be the, um, the co-creator of my life. I do have the ability to uh, have a large impact on how my life is. Um, but in order to do that, I have to recognize that there are also rules I have to follow right? And we're not talking about, you know, um, the kind of rules that, how do I put this? We're, 
we are talking about the rules that humans have to follow, right? So um, just looking at what are my, um, what are the physical conditions of me being immortal? How does that affect uh, how I have to organize my everyday life? So let's try to break this down in, into some examples that maybe are a little bit more digestible. Um, if you are a person that is born with a certain set of genetics that cause you specific kinds of health problems, then you're going to have to find a structure, a, a way to live your life that manages those health problems and also lets you do what you want to do in your life. How do you manage that? How do you balance that? These are um, these are the things that sort of confine and define us. And when I say confine, I don't mean it to sound so negative. I'm really trying to talk about the fact that we are mortal beings, that we are material beings, that we're, you know, living in these bodies, um, on this plane, there are certain, uh, laws, <laughs> rules that we have to follow. And, and no, we're not going to talk about the law right now. Literally, we're talking more about, um, uh, the laws of physics and we're talking about the, um, laws of biology and we're talking about spiritual laws. So there's stuff that we all have to take into consideration in order to have the privilege to live our lives to the fullest. So I think that there's something about this that's going to help us with our progress and help us um, to have that growth that we're seeking and to have that balance we're seeking in our lives um, and to get to this place of Yes, I, I am a powerful co-creator of my life. I can do this and I can't let my restrictions hold me back. Instead, I have to find a way to work within the system, um, right? So what is the um, what are the very human, very mortal restrictions that you contend with and that perhaps you battle with or perhaps you rail against or perhaps you resist and what can you do to accept those uh, restrictions those very human normal restrictions we all have what can you do to accept them a little bit more and then work within that work within that um, system if you will right? So we're living in this mortal world, in these human bodies. There are certain things that we have to adhere to. We have to eat three meals. We have to get some exercise. We have to get some fresh air. We don't have unlimited energy. We don't have um, unlimited potential in that way. Um, you know, the, th the things that our minds can do, the things that our energet energetic bodies can do, they are limited by what our physical body is capable of. So that can be an area that needs to come into balance during this moon as well. But the overall message is um, how can you find a way to be more in balance with, more in harmony with, more accepting of whatever personal restrictions you're living with in this way um, so that you can create a system for yourself, create a way of being for yourself that um, honors your physical limitations, takes care of you, you in that way, and also allows you in turn more freedom to create these other things you're, you're seeking to create in life. So really... Um, a great moon for some really interesting kind of balance as well as uh, having some bigger realizations about um, what kinds of things are going to be driving us and pulling us and calling to us as we move forward and also coming into a new appreciation for how we can move forward um, more literally 
And <laughs> what I mean by that is um, having new ideas, very concrete and very um, clear new ideas about moving forward uh, and, and um, having an appreciation for the process, having appreciation for our, our process of growth in whatever way that growth is happening, as well as some gratitude for how much we've grown so far. Okay, so happy new moon, many blessings, much love.